This look familiar? Sure it does. We're standing in Battery Park at the southern tip of Manhattan looking out over New York Harbor. There's the lady herself and way over there is Staten Island. What you probably don't know is we're standing by one of the largest toxic waste dumps or Superfund sites in the United States. It starts almost 200 miles north of here beyond Albany in the historic town of Fort Edward and it ends right here at the mouth of the Hudson River. The contamination? Polychlorinated biphenyls or PCBs. Our PCB story starts in the laboratory where chemical engineers realized that they could take hydrocarbons, molecules made up of carbon and hydrogen, and take some of those hydrogen atoms out and put in chlorine atoms, making totally different compounds. Compounds also that were very, very stable. Compounds like DDT and freons that destroy the ozone layer and PCBs. Now some of those PCBs were lubricants that would be stable under very, very high temperatures, and those were the kinds of compounds that General Electric chose to use in their capacitor plants up in Fort Edward and Hudson Falls, New York. So our story moves up to Baker's Falls, and the plant across the river is the General Electric Hudson Falls plant. It's no longer operating, but it was a capacitor manufacturing plant, and they utilize a lot of PCBs in that plant, and they discharged PCB oil into the bedrock and into the river here. Flash forward to 1966, Stockholm, Sweden, where a scientist by the name of Soren Jensen reports a disturbing observation. He detects PCBs in some 200 pike taken from different parts of Sweden. An eagle, and even in his own wife's and his baby daughter's hair, his baby's daughter who's only five months old. He also reports the presence of PCBs in London and Hamburg. And the paper concludes by saying, it can therefore be presumed to be widespread throughout the world. Where's the PCB coming from? And what are its effects? Other scientists got to work trying to figure out whether this stuff was causing health effects. Were they ever? Using animal studies and epidemiological studies, scientists found that PCBs were causing cancer in animals and were likely carcinogens in humans. They were also implicated in diseases of the liver, the endocrine system, and the immune system. They were causing learning disabilities and low birth weights in children. Finally, in 1976, U.S. Congress passed the Toxic Substances Control Act, banning the use and manufacture of PCBs and a whole host of other toxic chemicals. And finally, in 1977, General Electric stopped the use of PCBs and stopped the dumping of PCBs in the Hudson River. 30 years later, and guess what? Those PCBs are still along the bottom of the Hudson River. You know that stability that made them such great compounds? Well, it also makes them really persistent in the environment. And now the problem is, how are we going to get rid of the stuff? The way the process works, dredge barges remove the sediments from the floor of the river. We know exactly where the PCBs that we want to get out are from all of our core data that was collected over the last seven years. That's all mapped. Those maps have been input into computers that are on the dredge barges, and those are hooked into a GPS system, which is used to position the bucket. And the operators are looking at a computer screen, and they're seeing where the bucket is, and they're cutting sediment off the bottom of the river in new places to know there are high levels of PCBs. That sediment goes into a hopper barge and then once full that barge is brought up the Hudson River Champlain Canal to our dewatering processing facility. The processing facility was constructed over the last two years in Fort Edward. It has a wharf where the barges are offloaded into a size separation process. The finer material where most of the PCBs are in the silt is slurried with water and pumped to the dewatering building where filter presses press the material out. The water is sent to a water treatment plant that it was built on site. This water, which has some PCBs in it, um, although low, low concentrations, comes in. There is a little bit of particulate in here. I know it looks like it's just cloudy water. A very fine grain. This water is processed by the water treatment facility here. The particulate will be removed and then any dissolved phase PCBs will be removed in the granular activated carbon vessel. So this is the result of the treatment process here. Influent, effluent. The 
filter cake or the sediment, which has the water pressed out of it, is what gets piled up at the filter cake building. The filter cake is loaded into little hopper cars and brought out to the area where it's stored for uh, eventual loading into rail cars. These trains are then brought to Texas to a appropriate landfill where the material is in a controlled situation and can be monitored forever. It's an amazing story. All that work, billions of dollars to remove PCBs from a 40 mile segment of a 180 mile Superfund site, one of probably a hundred Superfund sites with PCB contamination. Wouldn't it be a lot smarter to figure out whether these chemicals are harmful or not before we put them into the environment?